React India. Thank you, Anjana. That was amazing. Well, actually, I'm really excited that I'm, be, that I, that I'm here in React India. So um, it's my first time in India, TypeScript now. And you have also like Remix that has been uh, from the ground up written in TypeScript. So in fact, if you check out the React source code, all of, it's all over in JavaScript, um, although you know, most of them are typed uh, or statically typed with flow. So we, by uh, using this flow notation at the top, you see that, which is interesting to see. So TypeScript types for React are purely driven by the community. When React came out, it didn't take long until the TypeScript uh, community added commu uh, community type typings to React, which I think is a great thing, um, and that, it, that it's not driven by, by a single entity or uh, a company. And I personally like that it's not too tight in, in, in TypeScript because it's so universal to any, any solutions that might appear later. So it could be anything else completely, right? Now, let's talk about the actual topic of my talk, which are TypeScript patterns. First of all, Boolean props. Who has used Boolean props, by the way? Have you used it like this way as well? You have? Yeah. So they're supposed to be like th to used like this. So they're supposed to be used uh, by, by uh, um, something that, y that has two states, like disabled, and can, be, can only be disabled or enabled. But what about this? Has, so some, someone, has someone something like this in the code? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, um, that's something, something called, called like a variant, variant where you have like more than two states. And it actually becomes odd when you actually yeah, add, another, add another Boolean state that has actually the same variant. Um, that's technically, yeah, odd, but possible. And um, with TypeScript, it's actually possible by writing, um, 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 by using that uh, in a way by writing discriminating union types. And with this, um, you'll be able actually to use it, or you'll be able, you'll be able to write it, but it, but it uh, um, uh, gives you the correct error if you use it simultaneously. Simultaneously, which is nice. But the more common way probably is um, by using um, string liberal union type props. So we basically get a selection of something, and then um, yeah, can, 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 use it, can use it by uh, passing the string, and then uh, it's, it's actually less code compared to discriminating unions. And um, these are also really great because they don't clutter actually your auto suggestions and intelli IntelliSense uh, editor compared to discriminating union types uh, with Boolean props. Now, what about, what about enums compared to all of these? So enums um, are really, really great um, for, uh, you know, also defining uh, string literal unions. Um, but some, some, there are some notable differences like um, that comes with enums. For example, like distinct types. So um, cool, cool thing about that is that um, it allows you basically to do distinct values with the actual same values, like same strings. So um, even if you have like the same strings here, they're not considered the same um, if you try to compare them, which is uh, really nice. Um, but also, it comes with some uh, disadvantages. So, for example, if you if you add en or if you add enums instead of your string little unions, it may clutter also your input statements if you use them more extensively. So, you it, it will add up more uh, code after all in the beginning. And um, apart from that, also, if you use enums, um, it adds it actually qu adds quite 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 some overhead uh, into your uh, compiled code. So just for adding enums, basically it's added, adds up basically eight, eight length lines of codes if you have like if you're using a simple enum for that. Uh, compared to if you were using just a string little union, it's just a single line of code like like this. So comparing booleans, unions, and enums um, are great are a great way for passing things like states and things. So, but sometimes uh, you may have seen uh, written some custom components. So, for example, instead of instead of the like button variant primary primary button or maybe sub submit button. So, when when do would actually custom components come come really handy? So, for me, custom components um, should be should be actual components that 
that basically um, implements like predefined logic uh, built in to the components. So for example, if you have a, a button that is like very tightly um, integrated with the form context, I think it's a great idea to put this logic inside of that and maybe add some uh, st states that come actually from the component and derive, derive the default states from there. I think um, it's 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 um, I think it's it's nice to um, to have these kind of components, but it's, I think it's important still that uh, uh, the appearance should should look identical compared to your primitives. Now let's talk about enhancing components with HTML element attributes. Um, who have you has any of these before or uh, still using that? Yeah. It's actually really, really daunting in the beginning um, if you have no idea what to use because there's like uh, so many ways on how you can enhance HTML attributes. And in fact, um, it's, it's not really clear on what it does and, and um, what they do. So I'm, tr I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to reveal you a little bit of the, of the insights, what's happening with, with all of these. So first, let's talk about HTML attributes. HTML attributes basically does not include um, like all of the types. So it doesn't include enough types probably for your um, component or for your element that you use. So it's actually more meant to, um, meant to add the attributes that are actually shared across uh, different elements. Whereas uh, you have all HTML attributes or HTML props, react.html props, which is kind of like more inaccurate. So um, an example is, for example, um, the button element, which types uh, the, the type prop or type attribute uh, as a string in, uh, instead of um, the more strictly uh, string little union with a button submit or uh, reset. And there's, there's, there's a lot of similar um, 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 elements like that. So for example, input or, or, or something like that. And then there is uh, JSX.intrinsic elements where you pass basically a string of your, uh, of your element, like the tag. And it's not bad, but it's actually um, it's actually very useless when you try to inline it. Although, if you wrap it with this uh, TypeScript built-in non-nullable uh, utility type, it's actually yeah, it actually works, and you're good to go. So it's so it's fine. But there's also you know React.button HTML attributes, and then you pass the HTML button element, for example, which does the job really really well, and it's really really good actually. So it, I think, I think with that, you are really, really good. But there is this other one, component props, which is actually the real winner, because there's really no difference when you write less characters with component props. So there is, there is no, there's no reason why you should write more. So better, you should better, better write component props, and then you're good to go. And actually, the true chance of getting HTML attributes, attributes are actually a, these. So if you, if you don't, really don't care about, uh, about um, uh, the component is wrapped with a ref or not, then probably component props will be your best friend. Um, and then use the other ones, like component props with ref or without ref, if you explicitly uh, want a ref or not. Now, react.function component. Everyone knows this type, I think. But probably not everyone knows that it's that its definition looks like this. So what it basically does is um, it attaches a couple of properties to our components. So that's great um, and, and really useful for, uh, for tooling and provide more contextual details to the component. So and it's been actually different in the past, um, past React 18. So I think React 17, there you actually had an, an, an implicit uh, children prop to the component. So um, and you, you may not want that for every component. And this is actually not the case anymore today. So here's an example uh, of how you, um, yeah, uh, how you can leverage uh, using the function component by uh, attaching it with display name, which is, which is really useful if you uh, work with dev tools a lot and want to have that more, you know, have that more labeled. Or, or when you do debug something or when you, when you try to write uh, third-party libraries so you can really, uh, you know, work with the names. So nowadays, we are dealing a lot with React, React server components. Who is using React server components in, in production, by the way? Four people out of 100. Awesome. <laughs> 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 
not that many, but still, it's important. It's going to be important at some point. And uh, yeah, these are basically components that run on the server and never gets to the client. In, and uh, they can be written also um, async, so which, which means it includes promises. So they used to be inco inco incompatible with, previous, with the previous TypeScript version, but since uh, TypeScript 5.1, it's possible to have the components returning a uh, promise. So if you consider uh, using or introducing uh, in your application React Server Components, make sure you're at least at 5.1 so that you can have um, like the full compatibility with your TypeScript compiler um, with uh, React Server Components. Now, let's talk reusing types and interfaces. I think reusing types and interfaces are a great way of avoiding you know, du duplications. And um, it's, it, it, is, it is less maintainable Less, maintain, less maintenance overhead, and I personally like it. And but I but I only like it if you um, export it only when you basically consume it elsewhere. I wouldn't consume. I wouldn't export everything, but I would only I would only export the things that are actually consumed so somewhere. This way, you're also aware of whether something is being used elsewhere or not. And there is tools that can help you um, doing that, or can help you with finding out which if there is any anything exported. Um, uh, and not being used, and and wipe it away if you want to. Tools like Knip, for example, I haven't I haven't had on the slide, but um, just wanted to mention it here. And um, now, what about you know? Sometimes sometimes these utility types come can become like very very complicated or very very unreadable to to read. So when do you decide utility type versus like the very simple void function or function uh, arrow function void typing? So we're talking about readability versus accuracy. So personally, I think it depends. And I, I actually like accuracy because, um, yeah, I, th I think it makes more sense to, to use um, um, utility types to, to give it more contextual information of what, what, what kind of type you're using. But uh, maybe I'd keep, I'd keep them so until the coworkers start to complain or how how unreadable the code gets. And with that, um, there, is, there is no one fits uh, for all solution, but I generally uh, basically prefer um, to, whoops, that was too fast, to prefer usability and keep simplicity on a case-by-case -case basis. So I think whenever, whenever it makes sense, maybe just keep the simplicity and duplicate, but um, yeah, and whenever not, just do the other one. Now let's talk about um, comparing compound and polymorphic components. So to explain a little bit, compound components, um, with that you're able to customize, uh, the customization is managed by uh, the pass component itself, whereas with the polymorphic, comp polymorphic components, the customization is basically managed by its primitive. And a uh, great example of uh, compound components are um, or is the is the slot component by Radix with the S child, where it basically merges the, the props together. I think it's a great way to um, reuse um, visuals from from the child component with uh, with functionality that you have in your parent parent component, which is I think an, an awesome um, um, solution for for you for ut utilizing merge, uh, merging proper props together. So here is a simple mock implementation of this. If you, um, yeah, you, you have your slot component, and basically what happens here is you have a React dot clone element and merge your props with your uh, children props together um, when, uh, yeah, when you when you want to do that. And uh, on your actual component, for example, your button, you basically have your as child, and when as child is applied, you basically render the slot component to render the ch child, and otherwise uh, just just uh, the regular uh, j just as is. Now, polymorphic on the polymorphic components, on the other hand, are a great way to generalize uh, customizations of elements or components. And the implementation um, of that um, is actually not trivial to create component with very strict typings. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm showing you here the, an example of uh, a strictly typed component. It's essentially um, essentially you are just, just you're just um, calling React dot create element. Or um, um, you use this variable declaration and render the element, 
to uh, apply it with some props that is coming from somewhere else. And then you can also write actually components with some generics. And generics basically allows you to pass um, uh, types directly to your J uh, JSX element by doing this. And it's actually great if you have um, hooks or something that needs more detailed details what values you're dealing with. So I think I've had that mostly um, with uh, values, like form values uh, for, for form, and then use that for, for the form, con form context, for example, to have that more, um, more accurate um, information about the form values. Now, let's talk about typing react.forwardref. So typing components wrapped in forwardref is actually pretty straightforward. So you have um, your forwardref function, it, it comes with a uh, um, generic, and then you just pass in the element and the props, and then you're good to go. But uh, it, it will be cumbersome if you want to type a component that has actually generics already. So how do you do that? There is multiple ways on how you do that, and my favorite way is actually by uh, using this um, um, solution calling called augmented forward refs. So basic, So there is two types of context. Some context that come with default values and some that doesn't. So here is how you type it with default values. Very simple, you pass uh, default, the default value, you pass in uh, the generic type, and then you have your provider basically that also you provide with uh, some default value and consume it as usual, and then you're good to go. You have the complete, complete fully typed, typed um, com completely fully typed. Whereas with, with without default, uh, default values, it's a bit different. Um, for for the context that doesn't come with any default values, that they they basically are generally nullable, and and they need to be kind of they need to be passed explicitly by uh, with null, and you have to also type them as um, possibly null. So the way you do that is like this that I've shown before, but then you may, your provider may initially um, be null and then um, up, updates it with uh, some actual context data later. And because of that, you may need to check whether it's ready or not for consumption. So I think one way to, to do that is, is to do this check right in your um, hook or your custom hook or in the component together. But I think um, it's a great idea to create actually custom hooks um, that checks for that so that you don't have to do that every time. Now, overload function components. So I think, similarly to discriminative unions, I think it's a great way for using that um, with props that have actually related uh, props in conjunction. So for example, if you have a data, data display component and want to only, um, or want to have your types that is um, related to currency, you just use these, these kind of types. Or maybe, um, maybe you have uh, plain text, then the value might not be a number, but it, may, it might be a string instead. So it's very useful to have um, overload function components to leverage um, more, more, uh, you know, more robust typing. Now, there is oftentimes the debate between whether should I use interface or should I use type? I don't know. And um, for me, I think, so typings are more concise and, and actually read it to you, uh, easier to read. And cool thing about type is you can actually override it all the time uh, via, via, via intersection typing or um, uh, you, yeah, you can basically chain a lot of uh, different types by intersecting th them and basically override them. But the thing is you cannot, you cannot add it really additional members to something. So you have to override it and then add it with additional members. Uh, whereas with interfaces, is a little bit different, so you can extend it actually with other interfaces, which makes it a bit safer than uh, than intersection section, section types because you're not overriding anything, and it's great for enhancing it with uh, third third party uh, uh, li uh, libraries. For example, um, if you want to enhance your uh, your 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 favorite date library with, with some extra customized types, you just you just enhance it there, which 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 adds a bit more type safety. And uh, yeah, not so good thing about uh, in, in interfaces is actually uh, override, uh, overwriting is not possible, which is both kind of, I think it's both kind of good and bad. Um, so from personal experience, um, 
I had I had a couple of projects and a uh, couple of applications where I experienced um, actually computational work uh, in the sense of that if I save if I save the file, it took like a couple of seconds until it saved, and I, we were able to fix that by um, moving away from type to interface, and um, therefore my take is actually that. Whenever possible, I think it's better to uh, prefer interfaces for the faster TypeScript compilation in your editor. And um, yeah, it makes total sense to do that. And also on that note is I also encourage actually to, uh, to do type annotations, especially for your function return types, um, for, for anything where it's possible, where it makes sense. And I don't, I don't only say that because uh, it's something where it's it's some it's something that I like to do or something that we should do. Actually, actually, this information is on the TypeScript Wikipedia, TypeScript perform, uh, Performance Wikipedia, where you can read a, read a little a bit more detail that uh, that how, like how 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 it uses your, the the work for compile and um, uh, yeah. Apart from all, um, although it's very quite straightforward and trivial. I think it's still underrated how how actually how much how much documentation can help for your types, so and and how how much you can make uh, your your coworkers more productive actually by just adding more documentation description about the typing that you have. I think one of my favorite example is um, they, uh, the the format function from DayJS, which adds like a lot of information like a lot of extra. Commenting uh, on what the function does and what it, what it does not, and uh, for example, when I use it all the time, I never remember what what uh, what the shortcut is for for some specific date format, and it's so helpful because it you can also like add links, and I just click on the link, and then and then it displays me basically the the different shortcuts uh, of 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 this format. So it's really really nice. Um, this is probably everyone's favorite type, or <laughs> so everyone's best friend, right? If uh, if you yeah, if you wanna 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 call it a good good day, so just any, and then we're good. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's ways around it. So you can still type it any, or sometimes you have you have just any because you do a fetch or something, and then it's just any. You cannot just cast it, and then it's good. But um, for these kind of examples, there is um, runtime parsing like Zod, so you can actually similar what we used to do with prop types. Um, you but it's but with Zod it's universal. You can do it with anything. You just you just um, define a schema, what type it is, and then parse it, and then you get and then you get as a result a uh, the data or the error or whatever. So it's not tied to the props. So and of course um, I need to mention that also here that. Um, Apart from any, there's also other good friends, as and uh, the exclamation mark that everyone knows. So, um, yeah, we have seen code like this a lot, but um, we have sometimes also even like seen this a lot, which is the non-null assertion. And to get around this, there is a way, there's always a way, a way around this, like type guards, for example, or type narrowing. You can, you can just do things like that to get the actual accurate type. So, whenever whenever you have as or um, or uh, the non-null type assertion with the exclamation mark, think about way on ways on how you can um, get around it. Maybe maybe through type guards or through type narrowing, so that you have actual narr um, accurate typing. So, there are toolings that can help us with fixing uh, low-hanging fruits really, really easily to automate um, where possible. And with that being said, great tools keeps your code base clean without the hassle. So when you add great tools, or when you add any tools, make sure that they basically uh, improve your life, that they basically take, take work from you, and basically, um, um, yeah, keeps you moving faster. You may have used probably, so the, there is there are some tools, but you, you may have used you may use them maybe 50% of them, 
But yeah, just, just to show it here on the screen anyway, just a, rem just a reminder that the tools are here to help and not to make things more complicated. And one last thing before we wrap up. Remember that the types are, aren't here to have uh, you know, fun with errors because it's so unreadable. Um, TypeScript is here to create more, more confidence uh, with your code. And uh, the React TypeScript patterns that I just showed here are here for helping um, you decrease the maintenance of your components. And uh, yeah, just go spend sharpening your types and uh, you'll enjoy it even more. So basically embrace the power of TypeScript, uh, but you know, don't, take it, don't take it too far. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Um, and keep typing code that is awesome. Thank you.